What is an appropriate BYD? So I think this is worth mentioning really quickly. I know it is on the website, and I think, Dave, you updated some of these as well. Thank you. Um, but it is really important because you will get sold things that you don't necessarily need if you get away and ask, what do I need for a BYAD? They want to sell you a $3,000 device. You certainly don't need to spend that sort of money. Absolutely, if your student is passionate about uh, multimedia or something along those lines that they, they need a, a bigger machine for, then certainly, but um, it's not necessary for the majority of the work that they do here at school. Ideally, it should have a keyboard. I, personally, I really don't like iPads from a BYOD point of view. They're just not a productive device. They're great for surfing the web um, on the lounge, maybe, while you're watching TV or something, but they're really not a productive learning device. Um, that ability to, to type and enter data easily is, is just not there. Um, they should have a reasonable size screen, and by reasonable, I mean you know, an iPad size screen is about the size that I'm thinking. They don't have to be massive. They, these things do need to be carried around all day. Uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi cap capability is um, essential. Our, all of our Wi-Fi networks operate on 5 gigahertz. That's um, something that you need, do need to let the salesperson know. They should already know, most of them do by now, but just in case. Um, we recommend a, a minimum of 64 gigabyte hard drive, and that's because uh, the software, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of free software available. If you want to take advantage of that, they're going to need a, a decent sized hard drive to download that, otherwise it'll fill up, and if, once that hard drive fills up, it all starts getting much slower. Uh, and a decent battery life, like five hours minimum. Um, and again, that's where that compromise of screen size comes in as well. Besides weight, the, a bigger screen is really going to chew the battery up much quicker, so they don't have to be massive, those screens, just big enough to be able to work on comfortably. Uh, have a durable carry case, that's really important. Um, they do have a pretty tough life. And I think, you know, $500 on average, you should be able to get all of those things and, and do. I bought one for my daughter for, I think, $400. Um, and it does all of the things that she certainly that she needs to do. Um, Microsoft Office and Adobe is available for free. I've talked about that. Um, they should go to the Canvas All Students Technology Tips page for um, the link to get to that or check out the BYOD section on the HPSA, HSPA page. Devices such as phones and iPads are generally not conducive to productive work. Um, certainly there is a time and place for phones in the classroom, but they are dictated by the teacher 100% um, via our school policy, and they should be. Um, they can be a massive distraction and, and, and a negative influence on the learning process, um, but when used correctly, they're, they're amazing. You know, they're, it's a great way. I, I know in TAS, for example, taking photos of projects or in dance, um, filming themselves doing different things and being able to analyse all of that. Um, there's a lot of applications for it. Calculators, is it? there are heaps of real applications for them. Facebook and Instagram are certainly not amongst those generally in the classroom. <laughs> um, and yeah, as I mentioned before, work requiring higher spec computers um, are conducted in specialist multimedia spaces, so you, you really don't have to go and get one unless maybe for a senior student that was doing multimedia or something requiring that so they can do more at home, but for the most part uh, they, they've got access to that at school.